At Bombardier, our business jets are designed to provide a smoother ride, no matter the flying conditions. The global aircraft's excellent ride quality has been demonstrated with impressive feats that require absolute stability. But from a technical standpoint, how does the global aircraft's ride compare to the competition? To find out, we set up a fly-off between a Global 6000 and its closest competitor. The objective? Determine which aircraft delivers a smoother ride. Wing loading and wing flexibility are often cited as the factors most likely to affect the ride quality of an aircraft. Wing loading is the relationship between the weight of the aircraft and the area of the wing. The smaller the wing, the smaller the area affected by wind gusts and the smoother the ride. Wing flexibility determines how the wing reacts to changes in air pressure. The more flexible the wing, the more it absorbs turbulence and the smoother the ride. A smooth ride is the product of superior wing design. So how do the two aircraft measure up? The competitor's wing is 26.4% larger, has a more rigid structure and no leading edge slats. The Global 6000 aircraft has a long, slender, flexible wing with leading edge slats. In theory, passengers on the Global aircraft should have a smoother ride than passengers on other aircraft. We tested the theory with the smooth ride fly-off. To test the ride quality of each aircraft, 3D laser scans were taken to determine wing flexibility. Accelerometers were installed to measure vibration in the cabin. And the aircraft were flown just moments apart to ensure they encountered the same flying conditions. We asked the expert who wrote the book on aircraft design, Dr. Daniel P. Raymer, to validate our theory and the results of the smooth ride fly-off. Hi, I'm Dr. Daniel P. Raymer, president of Conceptual Research Corporation out in Los Angeles. Previously, I was director of advanced design at Lockheed in Burbank. I wrote a textbook on aircraft design that is widely used. My main goal in looking at this material was to make sure that the tests were fair, they were repeatable, and everyone else looking at it would get the same answer Bombardier got and the same answer I got reviewing it. And so I looked at the test conditions, the airplanes, the weights that they loaded the airplane to. I looked at the instrumentation, the accelerometers that they put, and that was all fair, honest, and the same for both airplanes. When you're designing an airplane, you need to get enough lift. And in this case, the competitor airplane went with more wing area. And this means that when they're up at higher altitudes cruising, they also have more wing area, and therefore they respond more to the turbulence in the air. The wing of the 6000 has less area, but it's smaller not in span, but in cord length, the distance from front to back of the wing. And since it is smaller in cord length, it's going to have less depth as well, which means it's just naturally more flexible. So it will bend more, which will improve and smooth out the ride even more. The end result of all the tests, all the work that they did, was the accelerations. The graph showing the little squiggles as the airplanes respond to the gusts that they saw. And the answer was pretty clear. The Global 6000 was seeing less accelerations responding to the same gust, and they really are getting a smoother ride from the Global 6000.